Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Z Learning right here at Riverbanks Zoo and Garden. If you couldn't tell, we are in for a treat today. I got hard hat on, reflective vest. We have all the things that we need. In fact, right now I'm even behind the scenes at our rhino habitat that is still under construction. I can't even say brand new quite yet. It's going to be state of the art, but it is still very much under construction. And that is what we are here to see today. So those of you who are tuning in here in Columbia, South Carolina, we have a very rainy day, but the rain isn't going to stop us today. So we're going to try to socially distance and figure out where we can stay dry and keep our equipment <laughs> not from getting soaked. But I want to say good morning, Luke. Good morning, Cliff, Sarah, Jewel. Good morning, Christina. Happy Friday, everybody. And Piper, nice to see you as well. Thanks for tuning in live. It is so great to see all of your familiar faces. Of course, Stevie for tuning in live as well. And Meadow and River as well. Good morning from all of us here at Riverbanks. Today, we are here in our white rhino habitat. We're behind the scenes where people have not gone yet before. And I'm actually joined by one of my friends here at the zoo. His name is John. He actually is probably a familiar face to a lot of you. He's on local news a lot. In fact, he's been in a lot of our featured videos too from Riverbanks. But John is our director of animal care and welfare and he knows everything about what's going on over here at Rhino Construction. So let's go ahead and introduce John and turn around this camera. Ooh. We've got a lot to talk about, so let's go ahead and get started. You know, we're standing in an off-exhibit feature that we added specifically for the white rhinos. For some of those Z-learners out there that have been to Riverbanks and know that this was the former elephant exhibit. While we were sad to say goodbye to our elephants, we did it for all the right reasons. And now we're gearing up and really excited about bringing a family group of white rhinos here to Riverbanks. Um, we're to continue and share our mission about conservation. What a wonderful species, and we've got a wonderful habitat plan out here that we look forward to sharing with you. We absolutely do. Oh, John. Oh, here. I want to interrupt you real quick. Bonnie had just commented in. We can't hear John. We're going to get a little closer so that way John can get a little closer to the microphone. But right now, John, we are actually behind behind the scenes, not just inside the habitat. We're actually behind what was the old elephant barn and is now being renovated to be the white rhino barn instead, just to kind of get everyone's bearings. But John, tell us a little bit more about this space that we are in now. Yeah, so uh, thanks for uh, letting us know, Bonnie. I'll try to speak up because I <laughs> want everybody to hear because this is really, really going to be great. Uh, this is a paddock, an off-exhibit paddock area that we'll be using for when the rhinos first arrive. It's also because we're gonna be receiving a male and two females, and, and male rhinos, they prefer to have a little more time to themselves. And so this will be a really great space for welcoming the rhinos and start to introduce and letting them uh, learn about more about us and us to learn more about them. This is a great space uh, where they can have some quiet time behind the scenes. Um, and and it's, of course, it has all the things that rhinos need. It's got a really huge water, automatic watering system. Ooh, right behind here, you. Which is really cool and fancy and continuous uh, freshwater drinking source for the rhinos. And then, of course, uh, shelter and shade is very, very important. So water, shelter. We're growing grass already in here. Let me go ahead and just kind of pan so you all can see as we start to get rained on. But Kay, you had a great question that came through. Kay was wondering how many rhinos. And if you missed John's comment, we have three rhinos that are planned to join the Riverbanks family, a male and two female white rhinos. But John, since it's starting to pick up our rain, let's go ahead and follow you over. Let's transition. Since we are right now in a behind the scenes kind of off exhibit habitat, let's follow John, hard hat on and everything. We're gonna go over into kind of a transfer shoot area that leads into, I guess the on exhibit habitat, is that what we call it? Now, there's a lot of uh, work still going on in, in the barn to, to modify it, to, 
to accommodate the rhinos with some added chutes and transfer chutes and modified doors. And we'll look forward to showing that in time once the rhinos arrive, but uh, we want to share what's going on out here in the exhibit first. So another question just came in, John. Anna, age 10, was wondering, when will we be getting the rhinos? Yeah. Everyone wants to know, when are they arriving? Let's go ahead and tell them. Yeah, Anna, it's a great question, and, it, and we're all very excited. You know, animal managers here at Riverbanks are, are watching the construction to make sure the exhibit's ready for them, and once they arrive, uh, we're hoping over the next month that the, the rhinos will start to, to come into Columbia and we can share them with the Riverbanks community. So in the next month, we'll have rhinos start to arrive. The exhibit won't be fully open in a month. There's still a whole lot of construction still to be had. Right now we're taking shelter underneath a very tall <laughs> shelter here in our new rhino habitat. But we are coordinating with three other accredited facilities around the country to coordinate those transports with those rhinos. So John, tell us a little bit more about the creature comforts of making this a seamless transfer into a rhino habitat here at Riverbanks. Right, so we worked with our design team to, to make sure we incorporated all the, the features. Our animal care man, curators, keepers were all involved to help to uh, upgrade this uh, already great facility uh, that uh, for, for to meet all the needs of the rhinos. So we've added some really great features and changed some of the, the landscape out there, removing the pool that we can hope to go and take around and take a look at. But the um, uh, a full design team, uh, a lot of a lot of really great people put their minds to make sure that it meets all the needs of the rhinos and uh, so we can have a seamless transition. Also, we're working with the other zoos right now, learning more about the animals, so we're collecting information about them and uh, working with the keepers. Some of our keepers have actually been to the institution where these animals are currently housed and are working with keepers, and so I'm sure some of the keepers will also transfer transport with the rhinos and hang around for a while to make sure that uh, we have a seamless transition. John, that is such a good point. There is so much more that goes into bringing animals into our Riverbanks family than truly just moving, transporting them, getting the habitat ready. We've been working with experts all around the country to prep for rhinos. And those of you who are wondering, yes, it is going to be a breeding group of rhinos. It will be male and two females. And we do hope that they kick it off and actually reproduce and have a, a family herd right here at Riverbanks. Yeah, that's right, Milo. But you, uh, we all have to gonna have to be patient getting them in <laughs> and getting them introduced. But also, um, I want our viewers to know that the gestation period for rhinos is about 16 months. So we Whoa! It'll be an exciting 16 months as we prepare and wait for the first half. Uh, to be born at Riverbanks among this new herd. That is such a good point. 16 months in the oven, let's say, of a gestation period. John, let's go ahead and follow you on out onto the habitat. It's kind of still raining, but I think we can brave it. We've got an umbrella if we need it. Perfect. Awesome. We're going to head out. We'll follow you then. Now, you might hear a lot of commotion. There's construction happening right now. That's why John and I have our hard hats on and everything. But our crew that's actually in there, you might see them kind of driving back and forth. They're actually part of our horticulture team. And they've been dropping in. <laughs> We're watching our step. It's extra muddy here today. But they've actually been adding compost to the habitat. So yes, that compost that Riverbanks is so well known for is still being well used. But John, right now we are inside what will be the rhino habitat. In fact, let me go ahead and pan really quick. We have some familiar friends. Hello, good morning. Hey. <laughs> Those are some of our favorite Z learning friends. So now you kind of have an idea of where we are here in the rhino habitat. John, tell us a little bit more about the creature comforts to make it home for a rhino. Yeah, right, so, you know, uh, for those of the, you uh, that have seen the Thole Marine Elephant exhibit, there were some ledges, there were deep pools, and there were a lot of structural uh, infrastructure that uh, made sure we uh, provided safe care to the elephants. Now, uh, with the rhinos, we still have to have some of those features, but we were able to get rid of some of the ledges, some of the moats, and, sure. and a very large pool. So we've made, actually made this a little bit smoother for the rhinos, Yep. and um, so they can move all throughout the exhibit. That's pretty muddy right now, uh, <laughs> because we're still doing some work, but we did just uh, recently move the trees in. I and, love them. So Look at these. That's starting to take shape. We're moving, the, of course, the rock to protect the trees, but provide shade to the animals. Um, you know, over here, Milo, is one of the coolest features, and we're really excited about it. Let's go get a closer yeah, look, yeah. Look, a, we'll try not to get in the way. I think there might be a little bit of construction traffic, but hopefully we won't get run over this morning. There are a couple of these uh, around the exhibit, just, uh, and they're automatic feeders. 
Okay, so one more time, if you missed that quick, these are automatic feeders for the rhinos. So John, tell us how that works, because it looks like a big old chute. So these are gonna be loaded, you know, white rhinos are grazers, they like to eat grass and pay is what they'll be fed. Yeah, yep. So we can load that up, that big tall hopper will hold uh, almost a whole bale of hay, Whew. and the keepers will load that every morning, okay. and then um, on a, and they'll set a timer, and on a set timer, it'll kick out a couple of flakes of hay, and so the animals can eat, of course, They'll want to sit here and eat, and then it won't last long, but then uh, over sure. on the other side of the exhibit, it will uh, maybe kick out another one, so they'll sy synchronize the time so that they That's perfect. kick out at different times in this. Uh, just to increase activity. Absolutely. And items for the, for the animals and looking out for the animals' psychological well-being that's so, so important. Such a good point. So what this is, is it's a hay feeder. In case you missed that quick, it's still under construction. It's not finished quite yet. But what it will do is it will automatically at certain times during the day send out food down for the rhinos to encourage them to forage throughout the day and stay active, which is exactly what we want, those natural behaviors here at Riverbanks. That's right. Uh, we'll make sure that it stimulates activity for the guests to be able to see them. I mean, what a magnificent animal, the white rhino, and, and then moving so, so gorgeous and wonderful, and we really can't wait to share them. But we want to see them up and moving around, and also, uh, most importantly, their care and welfare will be so important. Um, after they arrive here, or actually during their transition. And Absolutely. They arrive. And uh, we've got some really cool features that, while this is exhibit is well designed for the guests, but it also has some really cool features for the animals. I hear the rain's picking up a little bit, Milo. <laughs> I wonder if maybe we should put that Yep, the let's do that. Perfect. That sounds great. We'll go ahead and put our masks up too since we're getting a little closer That's together. Well, our hands will kind of be full, but Megan, you actually had a great question about a water feature here in the habitat, and that kind of yeah. wants us to kind of walk our direction over, because John had briefly mentioned we used to have a very large pool for African elephants, and we went ahead and actually removed that, so that way it would be more suited for rhinos in this space. So let's go ahead and watch our step. <laughs> Y'all can see just how muddy it really is, but the wet weather is not slowing us down here. So John, tell us a little bit more. Behind all of this equipment is where that pool used to be. So is there going to be a water feature in the rhino habitat or how have we kind of modified? Yeah, so you know, um, as, as you said, we're gonna be removing, we removed the 180,000 gallons of water that we for, had for the elephant. Exhibit. Wow, yeah. Because rhinos aren't swimmers, they're, they're not good swimmers. and. Uh, but actually, uh, we're already preparing, just kidding, but we got plenty of mud. That's what, <laughs> that's what rhinos like. And so Absolutely. Somewhere close to here in this vicinity, we're actually going to have um, uh, a mud wallow that we make specifically for the animals. And I know as the summer progresses and the temperatures, one of the favorite things a white rhino likes to do is lounge and get all covered in mud. Absolutely. To protect them from bugs and insects and, of course, the sun and keep them cool. So. We're gonna have, instead of a pool, that the rhinos would not be safe for the animals. Uh, but we do have another one of the large drinkers that will oh, be sure. positioned out here. I think it was at the front. Yeah, front I think so too, yep. saw it earlier, but it's not installed, but there will be a, a water source for the animals, just like we had back in the paddock. Perfect. And inside of the barn, which is what they'll need. You know, Milo, something that's really cool that's going on over here. I was okay. gonna say, point it out, yeah, because yeah. we've been talking a lot about features specifically made for the rhinos, but there's also going to be some unique features specifically for our guest experience to get you closer to the rhinos to create those connections. What are we looking at here? Because it doesn't look like a whole yacht lot quite yet. So what's the vision for this area? Yeah, this is gonna be so cool. And I cannot myself <laughs> wait to stand out on this. This is gonna be a large pavilion that extends out into the exhibit. There's gonna be a cross, a, a boardwalk, uh, that's going to lead from the public space, the public sidewalk right over there. Oh, perfect. So, yep, yep right over where, here. Where that caution tape is. Yep. Uh, guests will actually enter and cross over a boardwalk that will lead them into the pavilion. Wow. It's going to be a large covered pavilion, probably have lighting and fans. Yep. And all the features for the guests to come out onto. That, so, the guests will actually come out safely. Yep. Uh, and well protected <laughs> onto the white rhino exhibit. How is cool. Really going to be cool. Uh, the other thing that I hate to give away all the secrets, but I got to share this because <laughs> this is so cool. Uh, the boardwalk that crosses over, the white rhinos will actually be able to go underneath the bridge. Whoa. Okay. So not only are you going to be able to see white rhinos here at Riverbanks, you're going to be able to get up close to them in the pavilion. But what John just explained was when you're walking over that boardwalk into the pavilion, you will actually be able to stand over a rhino and truly get almost like a bird's eye view, let's say, 
of the second largest land mammal in the world, right behind those elephants. How amazing, John. What a cool project. Jeez. Yeah, we can't, can't wait to, to share that with everybody. So we are still on track, slated to open this summer. In fact, it looks like construction's kind of paused. I think, John, we've kind of interrupted their, <laughs> their routine. So let's go ahead and start making our way back this direction. We're going to head on over kind of back towards where we had started. Y'all are sending in such great questions. If we're missing your questions while we're alive, don't worry. I'm going to jump on those comments later today once we wrap up this morning. And we'll get all those questions answered for you, what you're curious about. But John, can you go ahead and tell us a little bit more, just as we pause over here by that hay feeder again. Do you actually know, so we have those three individuals that are coming in. We had a couple of questions come in about those individuals. What are their sure, names? Yeah, Who sure. are they? I'd, I'd love to tell, tell, share with the Z learners, but uh, we have a, a male, uh, his name is Bill. And uh, <laughs> he lives in a zoo in New York right now. Um, he's 15 years old and uh, he weighs uh, 4,700 pounds. 4,700 pounds. Bill is a big rhino. <laughs> yeah, Bill is a big boy. And then we have uh, another female, a female uh, coming from a zoo in Florida. Her name is Condi and uh, she weighs 3,600 pounds. And then wow. uh, we have a, a very young female. Her name is Winifred. <laughs> I believe her keepers call her Winnie. But I love she it. She is uh, 2,400 pounds, and she's two and a half years old. Wow. Okay, so we have a range in age, size, male, female. You heard all their names really briefly. We promise we're going to introduce you more to those rhinos. As we get this habitat ready, you're going to hear it from us here first, of course. But, John, as we continue to walk over, let's actually head underneath that right. pavilion real quick. I want to give a shout-out to whoever donated that $25 donation to Riverbanks. Y'all are absolutely amazing. We're going to start making our way down over here quick. Don't fall. Right? <laughs> I'll follow you, John. You're good. <laughs> That'd be the last thing we want is for John or I to slip in all of this mud. We're not nearly as cut out for this as the rhinos are. <laughs> so we'll sneak over under here, kind of back to where we had started. Let me go ahead and turn around this camera real quick because I want to say a big, huge thank you to everybody who tuned in live this morning for a behind the scenes look at our rhino construction. Maybe next time when we give you another update on how the rhino exhibit's coming along, it won't be as rainy and muddy and we might be able to get further into the habitat to really explore because this morning we got kind of muddy folks. John's boots are just as muddy as mine. So next time we're here, we're hoping that it'll be a little drier, but a big thank you to John, our senior animal care and welfare director. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Everybody who tuned in live, once again, another big thank you for another great week of Z learning right here at Riverbank Zoo and Garden. And before we go, I want to give a quick shout out to next week. We're going to start the week real nice and strong with meerkats again. All of you have been requesting those meerkats. And instead of an enrichment session, I want you to think more on jumping on the scale. We're going to do a weight session with the meerkats. We're going to get their updated measurements on how much our meerkats weigh. But next week is a pretty packed week. We're even going to be going behind the scenes in our hospital next week. And we have a very special second birthday to celebrate later next week. So stay tuned for next week's festivities for Z Learning. But in the meantime, everybody, stay dry and have a wonderful weekend. And thanks so much for tuning in.